Hi guys, before starting this amazing ant keeping guide, I want to thank you guys for reaching 100 subscribers. I'm not so much about numbers, but uh, what really baffles me is the support from you guys. Love you so much for that, and please, if you have any ant keeping questions, we are happy here on Nordic Ants to help you. We are reachable in the comment section below. Or for more uh, complex questions, you can email us at nordic.ants at gmail.com. I also want to apologize. For you guys that have seen my video about the ant paludarium, might wonder why I haven't presented it yet. To be honest, I am not done yet. But I can promise you guys that I will get it done eventually. Hopefully soon. I still have school and I really try to systematically get done, but yeah. Well, enough shattering and let's get to it. So I am going to share with you my experience and maybe some helpful advice when you guys attempt to keep the notorious trap jaw ant. So, as you guys know, I'm based in the north of Europe. But sometimes I also venture into the dense jungle of Madagascar. And whilst having a great time, I also managed to catch and keep Odontomachus queens. For you guys that doesn't know, Odontomachus is the scientific genus name of most trap jaw species. But the trap jaw ant community, so to say, is pretty diverse. Here is the classic trap jaw worker, recognizable by its huge jaws that are both in 180 degrees. But they also have very different looks, like this one or this one. Some of them are actually pretty damn cute though, so... This is like looking at cat pictures, guys. Okay, sorry, stick to the facts. I mean, this species is super interesting to watch and looking at this guy's feeding uh, it's like watching small black insects cutting up some shit. It's super enjoyable. The speed of their bite is also completely stunning. And the bite force. Oh my god. Let me give you guys an analogy of it all. So let's imagine if I had the same bite force as these girls <laughs> and I for no apparent reason bit someone or something, for them it would feel like getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cars, each car weighing about 1.3 tons. And what is amazing is that they not only use it to completely shred their prey, they actually use it as an escape mechanism too. The bite force is up to 300 times their own weight. So by biting an eventual threat, it <coughs> propels them far, far away. Well, for an ant, I mean. So, how to catch a queen of this genus is pretty simple. This is a tropical genus overall, so their nuptial flights are random and diverse. But you guys know the drill. After a rainstorm or just some rain, queens usually fly. But what is good too is that the queen actually is semi-claustral which gives the opportunity for you guys to actually catch them while they are foraging during the queen's colony founding stage. Phase 2 So when you are caught your queen, you need to give her a proper setup. A test tube setup might do it, but you need to keep in mind that the queen is semi-claustral and that these species really love moisture. And often her larvae, as other cocoon-making ant species, needs some substrate to help it spin its cocoon. That is why I am going to share with you guys how I make an optimal Odontomachus setup for my queen. It all starts by you making a proper classic test tube setup.
So now, notice how I put sand in the test tube setup, like this. Now is the time for you to use the cork. You push it in and make a sort of chamber before you get to the sand in the test tube. Then, before putting the new test tube setup in the container, you want to moisture all the sand. Moisturized, you can now finally put the test tube setup in the container. The test tube nicely fitted in the container, you can now pour sand on it, or the substrate, whatever you have chosen. Sand, I think, works perfectly for this setup, so if you have sand, you should definitely use it. And then you cover the test tube like this. And now we're back to the downside of this setup. Uh, the only way for you to see the queen is by removing sand like this. For getting that, I definitely think you should uh, test this setup. Uh, then you moisturize the substrate like this, and you should definitely make the whole setup uh, completely wet for the Odontomachus queen to feel at home with uh, a lot, a lot of humidity in the air. And that's why the container needs to be airtight so that the Humidity doesn't escape from the setup and you keep the container very humid for your ant queen And the final touch is making a small feeding bowl for your ants And that's it if you know how to do it. It's very simple and uh, Maybe it's not an aesthetic at, as other setups with outworlds But I think it works perfectly fine for my trap jaw queens and if you guys have uh, any comments or ideas about this setup, you should leave some thoughts in the comment section below. And yeah, that's it. You put it on a heat kettle and just leave it. Eventually, when the colony is growing, you will need to move them into a bigger formicarium, of course. And I have actually tried to make one for them, but unfortunately the setup had some hydration problems concerning the plants and the formicarium. So I had to give it up. Uh, pretty sad. Uh, I like the design. Well, I think that this is a nice summary of my knowledge of these guys' behaviors and how to accommodate these behaviors. I also want to mention that if you live in tropics, you should definitely give these guys a shot. This is an amazing ant to observe, most certainly when they hunt. And now I think it's the time for Nordic Ant to sign out. Peace!